Recata da garavaga proto sobre che te libra di corabados, malica taba raba baba rabo soco taba lada. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry for the uh, the lights. I think um, the thundering is affecting our light here. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's quickly go into the Word of God tonight. We're still reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. I'll read from verse 2. Ephesians, chapter 1, we'll read from verse 2. There's nothing as good as sharing the Word together. It's not just enough for us to come and pray. We must know the mind of God. That's when we have spiritual progression, that's when, that's when we can have spiritual direction. Hallelujah. Amen. Until we, we have a direction of what is will, it will be um, uh, directing us to do. It's not just enough to pray. We must, we must know what his will you know, is. We must know what his will is as, as believers. We are beings of will. We are, we are beings of will. And um, every day we experience a battle of will. We experience a battle of will. And um, if we don't expose our mind to know what the will of God is, then we will either follow our will or we follow the will of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. So we, we, we constantly face the battle of the will. We are constantly fighting the battle of the will. And our purpose on earth is to be, is to, is to become the will of the Father. Is to become the will of God. Is to release our body, to release our, our brains, to release our emotions to follow the will of God. We are saved. We are saved. But the reason why we expose our mind to the word of God is because our soul is yet to submit to the will of God. The reason why we, we share the word, the reason why we want to uh, we want to understand what the, uh, 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 we, we, we want to see the word of God and the re revelation of God is to subject our soul to the will of the Father. Because we know that our soul is in, is in constant enmity with the will of God. That's why in Galatians, the Bible says that the spirit lost against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. That I've taught us once, uh, uh, once before that the spirit that the, 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 the scripture mentioned there is not the Holy Spirit, it's the spirit of man. It's the spirit of man. Because the soul has been, has been taught a different way. The, the soul has learned a different path. The soul has been exposed to a, to a different world. So when the kingdom of God comes upon the soul, it needs to be exposed to the spirit of God to follow the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Please read that. Um, Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read from verse 2. Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read from verse 2. The Bible says, Blessed be the God. Okay, verse 2 says, Grace be to you and peace from the Father, from our Father. From our Father. Now, this letter is not just from Apostle Paul, it's from God. The Father. Yesterday we learned that the Father, that God is the Father of glory. God is the Father of glory. 
and the Father of glory, if God is the Father of glory, we learn that we are the glory of God. We are the glory of God. And when we talk about glory, the word glory is from the word image. The word glory is from the word image. So, and when we, we discover that in, in Genesis 1, 28, the, the Bible said that God made uh, man in his image. In his image. So, we can also say God made man in his glory. So, yesterday we learned that God, God is the father of glory. And we are the glory of God. We are the image of God. So that grace be to you and peace from God our Father. So what, 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 what a wonderful thing that God is our Father. God is your Father. I, I, the greatest revelation of God in the New Testament is that God is a Father. It's great. God revealed himself in the Old Testament as Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah uh, Sikenu, Jehovah uh, Shalom. He, 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 he revealed himself as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, re he revealed himself as Elohim. He revealed himself as, as Jehovah, Yehoshua. That's, that's the revelation of God. But in the New Testament, the greatest revelation of God is as a father. So it's said, God, from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to know that that word and is not separating them. The God, our Father, is not different from the Lord Jesus Christ because they have become one. They have become one and indeed we also have become one with them. He said, blessed be the God, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. God has blessed us with all, not some, not few, not most, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Yesterday, I was also making us to understand that when we're talking about blessing, blessing, the real blessing of the children of God is not material things. The real blessings of a child of God is not material things. Now, we always oscillate as believers. Most believers always oscillate between two extremes. There are extremes of those people who summarize all the blessings of God in material things. They make us to believe that if you are talking about God's blessing, if it's not in expression of, of material thing that is not blessing. So those people measure, they measure, they evaluate the blessings of God in material riches, in, in, in clothes, in cars, in houses, and in all those things. That's an extreme. That's an extreme. There's another extreme of people who also try to spiritualize everything. They, they become spiritists. But we must find the balance. We must find the balance. And the balance is first of all, knowing that the blessings of God is a spiritual blessings, but they can find material expression. The blessings of God upon us, for instance, when God, when, when God put Adam in the, in the Garden of Eden, the Bible said that there was no doubt God gave Adam everything. Adam controls the Garden of Eden. But the Bible says that God blessed him. Now, when the Bible says God blessed him, it was the, the, the blessing that God is talking about there is not talking about Eden. The blessing that God was talking about when the Bible said God blessed him was not talking about Eden. He was not talking about the trees. He was not talking about uh, the fishes. He was not talking about the animals. He was, he was not talking about the resources in the garden. God was talking about his words. So the Bible said, and God blessed them, saying, and God blessed them, saying. So you see, the saying of God is his blessings. The saints of God, the words of God, they are his blessing. 
you know, in Numbers, God commanded uh, uh, Moses to tell Aaron to bless the children of, of, of Israel. And, you know, God told him, he said, he said, Thus will you bless the children of Israel, saying, May the Lord... Uh, 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 may the Lord be with you and make his face to shine upon you. So we discover that the first, the first, the, the foundation of God's blessing is are the words of God, the sayings of God. A man who does not have the sayings of God does not have the approval or the blessings of God. But that's not where we are going. Verse 4, according as is the as According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Of his will according to the good pleasure of his will you see one, one of the things we need to we need to know as believers is that one of the one of the signs of our maturity that we are growing in christ please listen to this listen to this one of the signs that you are growing in christ number one is the ability to discern the will of god the ability to discern the will of God. Number two is the ability to submit to the will of God. The ability to submit to the will of God. That was what exactly Jesus Christ did. From agree to come to die for man, leaving his glory above and subjected himself to the frailty of his creature. To the punishment and the shame of his creature, what was Jesus doing? He became man to submit. The Bible says he learned submission. Submission to what? He learned submission. Submission to what? Submission to the will of, of God. Jesus learned to submit to the will of God through the things he suffered. You see, submission to the will of God will always come with a price tag. And that price tag will be attached suffering to it. You see, it's almost impossible to submit to the will of God without going through the process of suffering. Why? Because you have your own will. You have your own plan. I mean, you, you may have the plan to, to, to be a businessman. You may have the plan to use your business to further, to, 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 you know, to further a, a, a certain cause. But when God begins to speak to you about his will that is different from your own will, it takes suffering, suffering, suffering to submit to the will of God. But you see, that's a sign that you are growing spiritually. That's a sign that we are maturing in Christ. Ability to design the will of God. Ability to design the will of God part time. The Bible said that the children of Israel, the, the, the sons of Issachar, he said they, they were able to understand times and seasons. They were able to know what should be done at a particular time. That's one of the greatest challenges of God seeking for men, I mean looking for men who will, who will know the times and who will be able to submit their will to the times and seasons. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he has, he has predestinated us. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus. According, according to the good pleasure of his own will. You see, when, that when you come to Christ, one thing you must be willing to do is that to submit your will to the will of God. Jesus said, your will be done, not my will. He said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because you must know that there is a will. You know, I used to say that, you know, when, when we come to Christ, it's true we were freed from the bondage of sin. 
we were, we, we were freed from the bondage of sin, but we, we, we now become slaves of God. Not slave in terms of slave, but we, we, we now become entangled to doing the will of God. Because being in Christ is not a liberty to do whatever we want. It's a liberty to do what God wants. Being in Christ, enjoying the grace of God, is not a license to do what you want. Some people believe that. Some people think that grace is a license to do what you want. That, oh, Apostle Paul said that, I mean, we, 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 are, we, are, we are liberated in Christ. We enjoy the liberty of the Spirit in Christ. But you see, that liberty is to do everything according to the will of God. Is to do everything that the will of God wants us to do. Not to do things that we want to do. So you should know that in Christ, we are not just free. We are free to the extent that uh, uh, of what Christ has made us free in. I don't know if you understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Okay, let me, let me continue. He said, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted in the beloved. He has made us accepted in His blood. He said, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, wherein He has he have abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, According to his good pleasure, again, he's repeating that verse 5. According to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself. Having made, see, let me, let me say something. It's only believers in Christ. It is only the believers in Christ that have the privilege of knowing what the, the will of God is. It's only believers in Christ. I mean, I understand there are different faiths. There are different religions. And in one way or the other, these guys also maybe they hear from God. But I can say this authoritatively, that it is only believers in Christ. Those who have actually genuinely experienced new birth, who carried Christ in them, that have the mystery of the will of God revealed to them. The mystery of God's will. The mystery of, of, of God's will. The purpose why we are brought into Christ. The purpose why we became born again. The purpose why we are the image of God is to understand the mystery of His will. The mystery of His will. The mystery of his will. The, the will of God is a mystery. The will of God is a mystery. And that's why it is not made available to everyone. The will of God is a mystery. It is not made available to everyone. But when you come into the kingdom, when you, when you come into Christ, you have the opportunity to, to, to unveil, to know that will. And that's why it is through the word of God, it is through the revelation of the scripture that we can come into the understanding of the mystery of his will. It is through the word of God, the revelation, I mean the Holy Ghost, reading the scripture to you by himself, that is when we can come into the understanding of his will. That was why when Jesus Christ was on earth, the Bible said whenever he wants to talk to the multitude, whenever he wants to talk to the multitude, he doesn't talk in, in, by revelation, he doesn't talk in plain words. The Bible said he will talk to them in parables. Jesus will always talk to the multitude in parables. Why? Because parables are words, are stories that are designed to hide the truth. 
They are designed to hide the truth. They don't, they don't, they, they, they don't, they don't, they, you don't understand them. And that's why when he speaks in parable, the people don't always understand what he's saying. Because the purpose of the parable is to hide the mystery. The purpose of the parable is to hide the truth. But you see, whenever the, the disciples, the people who have been trusted, who have been predestinated, who have been adopted into the sons of God, into the children of God, whenever they come to him, what will Jesus say? Jesus will tell them something like this. He said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. He said, unto them which are, be, uh, which are outside, all these are done in parables. All these are done in parables. Know that the mystery of God's will that Jesus is talking about, the, 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 the mystery, the hidden truth that Jesus is talking about, is not just about signs and wonders. It's not about receiving miracles. Because indeed, most 98% of the people that receive the miracles in the, in, the, in, the, in the ministry of Jesus are unbelievers. As an unbeliever, you see, you are permitted to receive miracles. Miracles can be given unto you as an unbeliever, as somebody who is outside, outside the jurisdiction of the kingdom, you can receive healing. Your children can be raised back to death. You can, your, 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 your blind eyes can, can be made to see. You can, you can receive the miracles even when you are outside the will of God, but you cannot receive the mystery of the, of the will of God until you come inside. It is that the, the mystery of God's will is only an exclusive heritage of those who have truly, truly experienced the new birth. And that's to tell you that the will of God is something more precious than miracles. The will of God is something more precious, more precious, more precious than signs and wonders. The will of God is something much, much more precious than material blessings. The will of God is an exclusive, exclusive heritage of those who seek God. Of those who are inside, not just inside, who seek God. I've been made known unto us. I've been made known unto us. I've been made known unto us. The mystery of his will. The mystery of his will. Because it is, it is the, the, the whole purpose Hallelujah. The whole purpose of Jesus coming to die is to unveil something. And that's the will. The will of God. The will of God. Because a rapture and the will of God are all his plans and purpose both for this age and for the age to come. I'm not talking about the will of God in marriage. Those are good. Much more, than, much more than knowing the will of God for you in marriage. Much more than knowing the will of God for you in this, in that. You must, you must be able to, you must be able to submit to the will of God. And like I said, most times, in submitting to the will of God, we go through suffering. Obeying the will of God is growth, maturity in the spirit. It's easy to say, oh God, what's your will for me in marriage? What's your will for me in marriage? Now God can tell you his will for you in marriage. But if his will for you in marriage is not the same thing as your will in marriage. Now obeying that will of God is when you have submitted, you submitted yourself to the, to the commandments of the kingdom. So somebody will say, oh God, what's your will for me, Mary? And God will show, God will show him or show her. And the guy or the lady is nothing compared to, is, is nothing, nothing compared to what he had in mind. But the kingdom of God, the, 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 the commandment of the kingdom is that against your own will, you must submit to the will of the Father. Because it is in the submission to the will of the Father that you are empowered to reign in Christ. So more than ever, 
Now, prayer of submitting, knowing and submitting to the will of God is, 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 is one of the highest prayer that we can pray. Let me read another verse from the scripture and we will start praying. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Maybe I should read from verse 7. Just for a little understanding. From verse 7. He said, As ye also learned of Apophras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit, your love in the Spirit, your love in the Spirit, your love in the Spirit. You see, you're, he's not talking about your love as an emotion here. Your love in the Spirit of God. Your love in the Spirit, not your love as an emotion. And that's why, you see, for instance, the, 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 the example I made, if God told you that, oh, this person is your wife or this person is your husband and the guy is in no way in no way in no way at all maybe you don't even love the guy you don't like the, the appearance of the guy the academic stature of the guy is, is, is nothing compared to yours and uh, uh, most of the times oh i want to marry somebody i love i want to marry somebody i love now in the kingdom of god we don't marry according to love we, call, we marry according to the will of god a believer does not marry according to the love of the flesh. We will marry according to the love in the spirit. And love in the spirit is submission to the will of the Father. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Guys, did you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. <laughs> did you, are you guys following me here? Yes, <laughs> when a man says, oh, a, a woman says, I, 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 I want to marry somebody I love. I love him. And God is showing you somebody who you don't love. I know this kind of teaching is stale. This kind of teaching is not, it's not a 21st century marriage teaching. But in the kingdom of God, we don't marry according to love. We marry according to commandment. 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 We marry according to... The commandment of God is the will of God. And the, the, the commandment of God is, is, is the love in the spirit. And that's why I say the law is summarized in one thing. Love in the spirit. The love in the spirit. And that's why, I don't know, if you have, if you have, if you have ever maybe watched any movie of royalty, movies of royalty or kingdoms in the, in the old room or the old system, the old world, when, when a prince wants to marry, this is the way of royalty. When a prince wants to marry, a prince does not marry according to, he doesn't marry the person he loves. He marries according to the tradition, the commandment of the kingdom. So a, a prince usually, usually, according to the kingdom, he must marry a somebody who is also royalty. It's a commandment. It's not that I, I love him. No. No. No, 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 there's no way God commanded us to love the person we marry. God commanded us to marry, to, to, sorry, there's no way God commanded us to marry the person we love. He commanded us to love the person we marry. So in the kingdom, God may be directing you to somebody, so somebody you don't love. Somebody you don't, you, that is not even, is out of your spec. But you see, obedience so his will is an expression of the love in the spirit we are talking about. Say, for this cause, verse 9, for this cause, we also, since the day we had, we have it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled, that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's what we're we'll praying for tonight. That's what we pray for tonight. That you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. Paul is saying here that since the day we heard of your faith, 
Since the day we had that you are, you are born again, we have one prayer for you, just one prayer. And that prayer is that we desire that you might be filled with the knowledge. The knowledge of what? Not just the knowledge to make money, not just the knowledge to know things, not, not, not just the knowledge to, to, to discover things, but the knowledge of His will. The knowledge of His will. We pray that you'll be filled with the knowledge of His will. In all wisdom and in all spiritual understanding. In all wisdom and in all spiritual understanding. In all wisdom and in all spiritual understanding. In all wisdom and in all spiritual. So the prayer of Paul, one of the greatest prayer of Paul to the church is that we know, we know the knowledge of his will. We have the knowledge of his will. That is, we come into understanding. Spiritual understanding of what the will of God for you is. I'm talking about the will of God. It's not just some, some, some trivialized, surfaced, ephemeral thing. We are talking about the, the, the heart of God. The heart of God is, the, is where the will of God is. The heart of God is where the will of God is. That's why, as, as a lady, I used to say that you must also be even in God's heart. So much that the, the guy must, must, must get to the center of his heart before he finds you. The will of God. The will of God. This is the prayer of Paul and that's what we are going to be praying for a few minutes before we do our, our Holy Communion. The will of God that we might be filled with the knowledge of this prophecy. I want us to begin to pray the Holy Ghost. Eremandos. Kedavadavadash. Because at times, it's not just about what you, you speak, you know, in your understanding. One of the things that speaking in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues helps you to do is to help you to understand. You see, speaking in unknown, uh, unknown language helps you to see into your spirit. It helps you to, it helps you to understand. It brings spiritual understanding into what your spirit already understands. Hallelujah. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, break it, tell me Zanana mane hala galabo shandri galados rekete gebrodo zobrodo zabra hilabadash renana nana mana mana zokoto balaladas rekete grebalama raba rada kagodos rekete gebrodo zobrodo zobero mana 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 das ingre koto grobono zabra dabados rakata. This is this prayer. This prayer is is a one billion dollar prayer. This prayer is a one billion dollar prayer. This prayer is more than any other prayer you can pray. The Father. Help me to be filled with the knowledge of your will. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. In the name of Jesus, Paul said, for this cause, for this reason, for this reason, since the day we heard of your faith, we do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will. Father, fill me with the knowledge of your will. Pray, pray, pray. Father, fill me with the knowledge of your will. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We are still going to pray that prayer again. I want us to read it in the message Bible. The message Bible. The message Bible prayer we say, he said, he said, be assured. That from the first day we had of you, we haven't stopped praying for you. Asking God to give you wise mind and spirit attuned to his will. Spirit attuned to his will. You see, as a child of God, the will of God is unveiled in our spirit man. But the, the, the problem is that are we tuned, are we tuned into that will? The, the, the Spirit of God is always speaking about His will, but are we tuned to that channel that will hear what the will of God is? So it's a spirit tuned to His will and so acquire through, uh, acquire a thorough understanding of the ways which God works. Ways which God works. How many of us actually understand the ways God works? Or we just understand the way the world works? We're going to pray that prayer. The Father, 
filled me with the, with the spirit of your will, with the knowledge of your will, with the understanding of your will. In the name of Jesus. Fill me, fill me, fill me with the knowledge of your will, with the wisdom of your will, with the knowledge of your will, with the wisdom of your will. Let me know what your will is in the name of Jesus. By time, by time, by time. Let me know what your will is. Let me know what your will is. Oh, and now this we ask God to give you a complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Let I receive your will. I receive your will. I receive your will. I understand your will. I understand your will. I understand your will. I understand your will. I'm filled with the knowledge of your will. I'm filled with the I want to declare I am not ignorant of the will of my father. I am not ignorant of the will of God. I am not ignorant of the will of God. I am not ignorant of the will of God. In the name of Jesus, I'm filled with the will of God. I'm filled with the will of God. I'm filled with the will of God. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. See, it is possible to be filled with the power of God and be ignorant of the will of God. It is possible, write this down, write it down. It is possible to be filled with the power of God and be ignorant of the will of God. And you know, as long as you are ignorant of the will of God, you will not be able to, to maximize the power of God. Let me quickly look for a scripture. If I can find it, I'll read it. It is possible because many a times we pray for power. God, give me power. God, give me power. But we fail to pray for the will of God. And until we understand the will of God, the power of God in us cannot find expression. Hallelujah. Amen. Until we understand the will of God, the power of God cannot find expression. The Bible says, I'll read here, the book of Luke 24, verse 44. Luke 24, verse 24. 44, rather. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the, in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the serfs concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scripture. Now, these are the disciples that lived with Jesus for three years. They've experienced the miraculous. In fact, they have done the miraculous. They've cast out demons. They've done a lot of things. And do you know what? They still don't understand what the will of God is. Even after they've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, after Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. But someone like Peter is still ignorant of the will of God. They were filled with the power of God, but they were ignorant of the will of God. And that was why Peter will not go to, will not willingly go to the house of Polinius. That was why Peter and the rest of the apostles, the disciples, were so unwilling to mix with the Gentiles. It takes persecution, persecution to send them into the will of God. Because they don't understand the will. They have the power. They lack an understanding of the will. They, they have the power. They lack an understanding of the will. The power of God in you will be useless. You might heal the sick and do all those things. But if you don't understand the will of God, you will not be able to still establish what the kingdom of God wants here on earth. As we go into the Holy Communion, we are going to pray, Father, reveal your will to me. That's going to be our prayer after the Holy Communion. Hallelujah.
once we take the, the Holy Communion, our prayer will be, Father, bring me to an under, into a complete understanding of your will. That's going to be our prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23. First Corinthians 11 from verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Remember your prayer, Father, bring me to complete understanding of your will in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Father, we thank you once again. Amen. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Amen. Father, we pray that you will bring us into a complete understanding of what your will is for our lives and for the kingdom that we represent here on earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bring us into a complete understanding. Fill us with the understanding of your will for the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us are blessed now? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. We thank you for joining us. Uh, everyone who joined, thank you. Abaya Ome, Odua Thank you so much. Everyone. I mean, it's longer this is i can't even tell how many papa sam thank you so much for joining us and um yeah pastor james mulero dickness of sacrament thank you so much for joining us god bless you all love you we appreciate you don't forget to join us tomorrow again 5 a.m at uh, 6 a.m on mix like like that church and this time again uh what we're talking about this is, is very important so please let's make sure we share this this post and at least People know about what the will of God is for their lives and for the kingdom of God. Thank you so much for joining us. See you tomorrow. God bless you.